Just a few games left of the regular season, and this wild card race is insane. Let's break it down. All right, welcome back, everybody. John, are you ready for playoff baseball, man? Because this shit is right around the corner, dude. There is nothing, nothing better than playoff baseball, baby. What do you mean am I ready? I feel like I'm ready for playoff baseball. <laughs> I mean, this especially because about. the Phillies have possibly the number one seed. You know, it's going back and forth between number one, number two. But, I mean, still, dude, whether it's number one or number two, you got to be pretty excited about this season, dude. They they started off the season crazy hot, kind of slowed down a little bit, but they, they just came back to earth, you know, and they're still playing really good baseball. They're still winning games. Their, their pitching looks good. Uh, lineup looks good. It, it's They're possibly the top National League team currently right now. I know you have opinions about this. I have plenty of opinions. Um, it's truly not a homer pick, so I'm kind of glad you started here with the Phillies. I mean, I truthfully think that this is the year that <laughs> I say the year because of everything that's been going on around them. The Phillies have stayed relatively healthier than any other actual National League contender. You know, look at your Dodgers, look at the Braves. You know, those are the two biggest threats to the Phillies and the, Bra the Braves that are, have a pretty depleted rotation you know they're missing Acuna Al Ozzy Albies has been hurt Austin Riley and that's if the Braves get in and I know we're going to dive into that a bit more I'm not necessarily afraid at all about the Mets and the Dodgers Padres you know they just don't have the pitching ultimately I'm going to say that the Phillies have had a very backwards year from what I'm I'm used to especially in the past couple of years but even as a Phillies fan my entire life I've not seen a year like this and when I say a year like this, so the Phillies have been known to start off very slow. You know, usually April and May are their borderline 500 and then kick it on August, September to slide into the playoffs and then they get hot. So this year we're seeing the exact opposite, as you spoke about, and that's the Phillies right out of the gate. Best team in baseball and best record in baseball, really up through the all star break and then just hit a snag. So. The Phillies since, and this is, we have a lot of things to talk about here, but the Phillies since the All-Star break have been playing 500 baseball, 32 and 31. And there's been better teams. Don't get me wrong. Uh, we're going to talk about the Padres. We're going to talk about the Dodgers. We're going to talk about the Mets. But those are the three best teams in baseball since the All-Star break. They're all contenders, but I do think the Phillies are the healthiest team right now. I think the Phillies have the best ability to get hot. And the Phillies have been there the past two years, and they've been this close. So let's talk more about that as we continue. But I know you are itching to talk about your Dodgers, who are currently the number one seed. So I can't say that the Phillies are the favorite when they're not necessarily even the top seed at the moment. So how are we actually truly feeling about your Dodgers as we're approaching the end of the regular season, entering the postseason? After last night, I feel a little bit better because – you know, watching Jack Flaherty pitch, he only went five innings, but it was against a really tough lineup and he held his own. You know, he limited them to three, three earned runs. He wasn't able to get the quality start, which is fine because the bullpen was able to go in there and really impress, you know, and I feel like the Achilles heel of most teams is usually the bullpen because most of the time you rely on your starters to go six hopefully seven innings. And a lot of times it doesn't go that way. So you have to figure out different ways to, uh, to tame the, the opposite offense, you know, and the Padres have been doing a really good job of that lately. Their bullpen looks amazing. Um, they have a few guys in there that are basically shut down guys like Jeremiah Estrada who's really, really good. Um, you know, there, there's, 
there's very similar traits that I see in the Padres now that I've never seen before, except from the Dodgers, you know, and they're very, they're a very good comp to the Dodgers right now. I mean, they're only two games back out of first and depending on what happens later tonight, we could see, a, I mean, we're already seeing a really close race, but we could see the Padres take the division come this weekend you know the the Dodgers have a series against Colorado and it's in Colorado and the Dodgers pitching has been kind of all over the place you know um but I feel like the Dodgers offense can definitely be huge in Colorado you know especially with the top of the order with Otani and Mookie and and Freddie Freeman and then you move into Will Smith and Max Muncy and and uh Tommy Edmond who's been uh, pretty good since he got uh, traded to the Dodgers this season. and But then you look on the flip side and you see the Padres and you have Tatis and Machado and Profar that kind of came out of nowhere. Cronenworth has his big shots once in a while. And I, I feel like it's a good comp to each other versus like on the Philly side in the National League East. The Braves are a really good team, but they have way too many injuries to – to overcome this season. They have no ace, you know, I guess what what Spencer Schwellenbach is now the ace of the Braves this season because there's no Strider. And then there's no superstar in the lineup this season because Acuna is out. Austin Riley's been, you know, up and down all all season. Matt Olson's been up and down all season. Ozzy Albies has been out for a while, like you mentioned. And, and now they're starting to get some of their players back, but I still don't trust the lineup. I trust the Phillies lineup way more than I trust any other lineup in the National League East. But then you go back to the division, the, the National League West division, and it, it's like you have those two contenders, plus you have the Diamondbacks on the heels also. So it, it's really going to come down to whoever wins the division, I think, um, obviously is going to be the favorite going into the postseason. But it's that it's going to be a lot to handle for either team, you know. Are you, not, are you not confident they're going to win the division? The Dodgers are going to win, win the division. I'm not. I'm not confident we're we're the Dodgers are going to win the division. I think the Padres have a better pitching staff. I think the Dodgers have a better lineup, but I feel like the Padres have a more well-rounded lineup. You know, I, I feel like there's guys that come up in clutch situations and. And the Dodgers, like you look at like the top five in the batting lineup and it looks great, but then the bottom four, it's kind of just like, well, Pajes does, had, doesn't really do anything anymore. Gavin Lux has been like super cold lately. And they got rid of Jason Hayward for God, God knows why, who's been in the, the, the American League West to one of our biggest rivals with the Houston Astros, and he's been tearing it up over there. Defensively, he's been getting some, some, uh, some clutch hits here and there. So I, I don't know. It's, 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 hard to, it's hard to predict this season because this season, we, th- this is the first time in a long time that we haven't seen a single team have a hundred wins by the end of the season. No team has a chance to win a hundred wins to have a hundred wins at the end of the season, you know, and the last time that that happened was what, 10 years ago, maybe, I don't know, give or take, but consistently there's at least one or two teams that have a hundred wins every, every season. So this, this season is definitely, I mean, that's why we called it the craziest wild card race, right? Because, there's there's so many teams that this new playoff format playoff format it's like I love it but I hate it you know what I mean there's teams that that squeak in and then could possibly win the World Series you know like 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 Detroit dude Detroit is one of the worst teams in baseball one of the lowest the lowest uh, runs total I mean in in general for the year not lately because they've been freaking hot dude but i'm just saying like for the com- for the complete season all right so i do have a graphic here for the american well well, League. Well, so, well, well 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 i got i you, you you're talking a lot here i gotta stop you here and first off say that the dodgers <laughs> are winning the division number one they have four games left one against the padres if they shit the bed against the, the rockies they don't even deserve to be in the playoffs so the dodgers are going to win the win the division so let's start there I will say, going back to it, and then let's hop into those division standings real quick, but how much – I haven't been in this position since 2010, where the, uh, 2009, where the Phillies win the division, 
and have a first round bye. So I will say that the hot, this playoff format really supports the teams that are the hottest and can remain hot. Now it, a lot of Phillies fans, I'll use Phillies just because I live here and I, you know, I'm around Phillies fans all the time are freaking out because again, past couple of years, we get hot in September and just ride that out. Phillies have been very mid the past two and a half months. And I'm, I know that they can flip on a switch, but you know, with that said, if you're playing average baseball and just go into the playoffs, just hoping to turn it on, that's not a guarantee either. So I'm a little bit, my biggest fear is I'm a little bit worried that the Phillies are just going to kind of get stale. You know, when you have a team like the Mets, Diamondbacks or whoever ends up making it. And then same thing with, you know, Tigers, Royals, all those who, you know, squeaking their way in and are playing great baseball and just continue to keep that momentum going, you know, you stay hot. And I think what happened the past couple of years, specifically when the Phillies knocked the Braves out of the playoffs, the Braves got, they were a great, one of the, the best regular season ever statistically on offense, at least last year. And they got comfortable and they, you know, go into Citizens Bank Park. It's a totally different atmosphere. Playoffs are a different beast. And I just think I'm afraid that you know, teams like the Dodgers, Phillies, Yankees, and Guardians just get comfortable in the first round by. And there no team, none of those four teams are really playing their best baseball that they've played all year. So th- that's my biggest fear as a Phillies fan. And I don't know if you feel that way as a Dodgers fan as well. Um, yes and no. I mean, the Dodgers are seven and three in their last 10. But what scares me is the Padres are eight and two in their last 10. And one of those wins was against the Dodgers in the first game of the series on Tuesday. You know, that, that, that's the biggest fear right there because they are this season's biggest division rival. You know, I, you know, we talk about this all the time when, when, when Carlos and I get on the pod together, um, that the Padres think that the Dodgers are their biggest rival and the Dodgers are kind of just like, uh, you're, you're getting there, little boy, you know, it, it win a couple more games rivals. every season and. Yeah, I think rivals change. I mean, your your rival is truly the Giants, mm-hmm. right? That would that's, but I mean, that's not that contenders would, this year. So this year they're kind of irrelevant. Now, when they come, would, down, it's a completely different story, you know, because mm-hmm. Giants fans get crazy, Dodgers fans get crazy. It's the same thing. Like if if, if the Mets were not a contender this season for the wild card, if let's say the Mets were in last place, you guys wouldn't even give them any any attention at all, you know, until they come to town. Because when they come to town, New York is so close to Philadelphia that I'm sure there's a bunch of Mets fans that go to Philadelphia to go watch the game, you know, and vice versa. Philadelphia fans go to, to City Field to go watch a game. It's only a few hours away, two or three hours away, you know. So driving that distance to go watch your team in a different, a different stadium – you know, there's there's something different about that, and you, New York fans and Philly fans are a different breed, man. You know, it, I feel like the same, but with like LA fans, it, it's it's a diff, different scale. You know, I feel like Philly fans are more vocal, you know, and uh, Mets fans are a lot more vocal also. So that rivalry in itself, it's exciting to watch. But both of these teams, I mean, all teams, when you're playing against your rival, you just step up your game. You know, and I feel like that's what the Padres and the Dodgers are doing right now because they see each other as rivals right now. Even though it's a bigger rivalry from the Padres side than the Dodgers side, it's still a rivalry right now, at least for this season, 2024, when the Padres are at our heels, you know, trying to to win the division. And they're almost there, man. Two games back with, what, four games left? You know, and... The season could even end in a tie, dude. Three games, three games back, four games left to go. There's no way, man. You're winning the division. Just don't sweat it. But, but I will tell you that the Dodgers are not going to win if they go head to head with the Padres. I'm telling you that. And because the uh... Dodgers, exactly. The Dodgers think of the Padres as like their little annoying stepbrother. Mm-hmm. And it's just they're getting picked on by them. But we saw last year what happened. And I, I, I think the Padres are a better overall team right now than the Dodgers. Now, that's simply based on health. So, again, you know, you're both 
seven and three versus eight and two in the last 10, that really says you're playing great baseball and so are they. But when you guys are going to need starting pitching, you're not going to have it. Exactly. Now, in a three-game series, I think it could really go either way because, you know, you really only have to put your two best pitchers out there to try to get your your two wins, you know. But in a five-game series, like let's say the the Dodgers and the, Phil, uh, and the Padres were, you know, they're in a three-game series right now. But if they were to face off in e- each other in like the wild card series – you know, it's not going to happen because the the Dodgers are either going to have the number one or the number two seed. So they're, they're not going to see the Padres in the in the wild card series. Uh, but I'm with you. I think I know, you man. guys would it's, win. A, you guys would have a three game series, but you're not going to win a five game series. And that would yeah, be a, because there's a, no there's no depth, you know, and the Padres do have depth. You know, they they have actually a, a really good amount of starting pitching that is doing really well. And um, all right, so I have it here. Dylan Cease, who threw no hitter this or earlier this season. Joe Musgrove, who threw no hitter, was it last year or the year before or something like that? Uh, Michael King, that got traded from the, Yan- uh, the Yankees, who's been great this year. And you, Darvish. Now, those four are great in a five-game series, even a seven-game series, you know, if it goes that far to the championship series and the World Series, which I I don't think the Padres have what it takes to go to the World Series yet, you know, and it's it's possible. We said the same thing about the Nationals in 2019. We said the same thing about the Diamondbacks last year, and, and those teams made it, and the Nationals actually ended up winning it all, you know, against the Astros, above all teams you know that that's that's crazy to me in 2019 that that happened but playoff baseball anything could happen man anything can happen in playoff baseball you have guys going in there with a certain mentality and they just show out you know versus during the regular season you could have a guy with like a 450 era but then in the postseason you know he has a a sub two era but then on the flip side you got guys like kershaw that have a, a two 12 ERA for the season and then go into the postseason and he's given up four runs in the first inning. That was years ago, man. Kershaw's Kershaw's cooked dog. Yeah, he's done. He's done. No, but I mean, gave me a bullpen guy, a long relief for you. Maybe. Is yeah. That that's exactly what I was thinking. I would never have him as a starter in 2024 postseason, but you know, if Jack Flaherty goes five innings or if Walker Bueller goes four innings and gets into some trouble or Yamamoto that's not completely stretched out yet, that's only going four innings at a time, Kershaw could come in, pitch two innings, you know, and possibly three. Uh, he's still not back yet from the injured list, so we don't even know if he's going to be on the postseason roster or not. But the, the Dodgers do have a decent enough bullpen where they can make it happen. Like we said in the three game series, possibly even a five game series, you know, with if Yamamoto can go five or six innings and Flaherty, if he pitches like he did last night and allowing three earned runs, that's fine because the Dodgers have the lineup to give him run support to uh, to build onto that, you know, to be able to take out the competition. But in a seven game series, that's that's the biggest the biggest fear, you know, for any fan of any team that doesn't have that pitching depth like the Padres do four starting pitchers that you can trust to go out there and, and basically shut down the competition, you know, and, and allow one or two earned runs, maybe even three, you know, that's fine because you have to trust your offense as well. Right. Yep. We're going to hop back into this, but let me see those AL standings and let's chat some AL because we've got a lot to talk about on that front too. All right. All right, so we got so, the Yankees. Uh, the Yankees have not de- uh, been decided the division winners yet. You know, that X next to their name right there. That means that they have a possibility of of Baltimore taking over as the number one seed in the AL East. And then you have the Guardians and the Astros who have clinched the division already. So those two teams right there, they're already good. You know, that there's only going to be two teams that get the bye, though. So we're trying to figure out who's going to get the bye. Right. Because one of these whoever the the bottom seed is of the division winners is going to have to face one of those wild card teams. Yankees are going to get the bye. They're going to win the division today, assuming they can get the game in Um, and Cleveland, it looks like, too. So 
if those are your two best teams in the AL, you know, I really, I, I'm not, I have not been as big on Cleveland all year. I just don't, I don't know why. I just don't think that they're, they just seem like a one and done. I don't know why. I just, I don't believe in them. It's, it's just a combination of, and maybe they're the underdogs, you know, but I, I know I shouldn't be sleeping on the rotation. I just don't know that they can perform when they need to, you know, they don't, I don't think they have enough guys that have been there and done that. And there's not enough postseason experience. At least they get a first round buy. It's, but if they have to go up, so right now the bracket's saying that they're going to face the winner of Houston and Detroit. And if Detroit stays as hot as they are, I'm going to say that Detroit actually stands a fighting chance against the Astros. And also, I like them better than the Guardians. I will be honest with you. So it's going to play out very interesting here. Um, Baltimore right now would face Kansas City as the four and five seed. And winner of that will play the Yankees uh, in the ALDS. So between if we're talking about the postseason picture today, I want to start with that one, Will. Kansas City and Orioles, who do you like out of that and why? Um, I, I, I like the Orioles. I think they have the pitching that can get it done and the, the, the Royals do too, but how much stock can you really put into Seth Lugo? You know, the, the older guy who's been on somewhat of a decline. Um, you know, he's, he's been kind of, he was very consistent at the beginning of the season, but you know, past the all-star break, he's been kind of up and down. So, um, I, I think I got to give the edge to Baltimore, but Baltimore, uh, it's it's going to come down to Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns needs to pitch like the ace he is. Yeah, no doubt. It, it, and you nailed it there. I think their pitching has been sleepy. Um, Grayson Rodriguez is actually out for the playoffs. So that's yeah. a big miss. Um, that's a huge miss. Corbin Burns pitching like hell. Their bullpen's falling apart. Uh, as much as I absolutely loved the Orioles, right now I can't say that I love them. You know, going into the season, I picked them to, to face the Phillies in the World Series. And as much, like I said, as I want to stick with that, I just don't see that their pitching is going to be able to hold it together. And their offense has been MIA a bit here. So I'm not going to pick the Royals. I think the Orioles will squeak by the Royals in that series to face the Yankees. But then I think the Yankees Orioles series is going to be uh, trouble for Baltimore. Yeah. I mean, like I was saying before, I think it's really going to come down to Corbin Burns. Looking at his August, he had a terrible August. He had five starts, only had one quality start, which came against the Rays, who have been terrible offensively. And you know, looking at the other starts, he he gave up five runs against the Guardians, eight runs against the Red Sox, six runs against the Astros, and six runs against the Dodgers. You know, and those are four really good lineups that he gave up all those earned runs. But dude, you are supposed to be a super ace. You are a super ace. You are supposed to be a top five starting pitcher in all of baseball. And you go out and have an August like that? Yeah. What the hell is going on? on I mean, ha, you, you know, usually you would assume that guys show out on a contract season, which is why I was really big on Christian Walker this season, and Alex Bregman, and Corbin Burns. You know, I thought they were all going to go out there and just have these – amazing you know career seasons to try to get that huge contract and none of them have really lived up to that hype i mean christian walker that wasn't really his fault he was actually doing really good but then he ended up getting hurt bregman started off the season really really cold and then he kind of like started coming into his own more you know a couple months after and he's been fine he's having a typical alex bregman season but then corbin burns man you I, I know the last couple of seasons have been different, you know, but you expect this guy to go out there and pitch 180 innings with 230 strikeouts in the, at the end of the season. And he's not even getting one strikeout per inning anymore. And in the postseason, you need strikeouts. You need to be able to get these guys out by making them swing and miss, because when you put balls in play, things happen, you know, and you, you need the shutdown pitchers to go out there and cut out the competition. I don't want to go too far on this tangent here, but I will say that I think a lot of that plays into Baltimore's style of play is that they're encouraging Corbin Burns not to be the, you know, do too much. You don't have to get 
10, 11 strikeouts a game anymore. Put the ball in play and our young defense will make the play. And, you know, I think that's going into play a little bit. But um, again, I don't want to go too much in that tangent. A tangent I do want to quickly touch on because I just it, maybe hilarious isn't the word, but to watch the collapse of the Minnesota Twins and for that matter to the Seattle Mariners, both were the Mariners had a 10 game lead on the Astros before they ultimately clinched earlier this week, the division, but the Mariners had a 10 game lead, I believe at the all-star break I heard. And not even, not only that, the Minnesota twins just, they, I've never seen a collapse like this where they've played. It's just horrific baseball. Nothing's working for them anymore. And they're losing squandering a lead to the tigers who like we talked about red hot, but any uh, thoughts on those collapses? And I'm going to say, Twins, no matter what happens over these next four games, I, I, it's too late, man. They're, they're yeah. not getting in. Yeah, and I think it all stems down from their ace. I mean, it, that I always kind of go back to that. You know, I feel like if your ace is not on, the whole team is just going to struggle. You know, you you need that leader in the clubhouse, whether it's Zach Wheeler or whether it's Yamamoto or glass now who's not even going to be available in the postseason or corbin burns you know or pablo lopez from the twins who has a 411 era this season terrible man like we've never seen pablo lopez be this bad before you know everyone expecting him to come out and be pablo lopez you know the the guy that in fantasy baseball gets drafted within the first like you know two possibly three rounds that more, more likely two rounds, you know, because he's almost guaranteed to get 180 innings and 220 strikeouts every season. And the strikeouts are still there, but 411 ERA, man, he has 190 strikeouts and 179 innings pitched. So it's a little bit lower than you would expect from him. Bailey Ober hasn't been really doing good, as good as everyone thought he was going to either. He's He has a 394 ERA. Joe Ryan was hurt most of the season, and that's all they have. They, they don't have – who are they going to put out there? David Festa? Chris Paddock? Yeah, but, but they also didn't make any moves at the deadline. No, they so didn't. I, that's I, I feel them, like man. They yeah, they, I feel like they gave up. They probably invested too much money in guys like Carlos Correa that spends most of the time, you know, icing his feet because of his plantar fasciitis, and he's barely on the field enough to even be relevant. Sounds like sounds like you're a big foot guy. You would know that he's icing his feet. Well, I actually do have plantar fasciitis myself, and I mm-hmm. know how painful it can be, so I do sympathize, but not with Carlos Correa because that dude's a dick. Hmm. Allegedly. Um, all right. So next, next one I want to break down with you too. Um, so assuming that Minnesota doesn't, you know, somehow turned on and Detroit just falls off, we're looking at a Tigers Astros matchup. And I think of all the matchups, I think this one's going to be, I want to say the most boring. It's the most intriguing, I guess, uh, might not be the most exciting just because the Astros have been kind of the Astros haven't been the true Astros this year. So they're they're quieter than usual. And then Detroit, you know, you said one of the worst teams in baseball. I, I'm not going to go that far. I just think they're very, very surprising. Um, they weren't bad. They were just mid. Um, I, well, if you look at the total runs scored, so let, let's bring that graphic back up, right? So uh, run scored for Detroit. Look, look at all these other playoff teams, you know, and you look at the run scored for Detroit, 669. They did have, what is that, the second lowest runs against? So that that's a claim to their pitching right there, you know, but 669 runs scored and they're making it into the postseason? Like, that's crazy to me. You know, yeah, the, so- the Guardians have 703, which is the next lowest, and that's – 34 runs more than than Detroit. You know, you, you have to score runs to to win in the postseason, you know, but postseason baseball is all about pitching, you know, and I do they have the pitching staff to make it happen? Tarek Skubal has been great. Cater Montero has been decent, but then that's all they have. Like Casey Mize, they, Reese Olsen. They also have the 
best bullpen in baseball since the All-Star break. They have the lowest yeah. ERA in baseball at a 3.07 since the All-Star break. And they just called up my boy, Jackson Job. You're going to do this. Jackson, <laughs> Job, Jackson Job is your sleeper. Jackson Job is the David Price of the Tigers. And God forbid the Tigers somehow make the World Series. I'm going to remember that this was at the 30-minute mark. But with that said, um, I do think that the Tigers are – a Cinderella story. I don't think they're going to make it past the Astros, but it's awesome they made it into the dance. Um, but because of the hope for next season, you know, and it kind of shows you what this format, this new playoff format, can do for you, you know. And just like you said earlier, the the team that goes into the postseason that is the most hot is probably going to be the one that at least makes it to the World Series in that division, possibly even wins it all, man. Detroit's going to be so exciting to see what happens in the offseason with them because they're going to have money, they're going to be in the playoffs, and they're going to have a starving fan base that has signed Javi Baez in the past five years. That's been their big fish, so they're due. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, want to hop back into the uh, – back in the NL side here and talk some uh, – who are – I guess we can talk about Diamondbacks, Mets, Braves a little bit. So the the Diamondbacks, they're they're squeaking in. You know, I'm gonna take off this banner so you can see the next team in there, at Atlanta. So Atlanta currently doesn't have a wild card spot, so they need to. They're they're one game out of the wild card spot. So if Arizona loses a game and Atlanta wins a game, you know, then then they're right back in there. But you know, it th this is the race that we're talking about right here, man. Between the the Braves, the Diamondbacks, the the Mets, like they're all within one game of each other, one or two games of, of each other. And, yeah. and then, then you have, you know, the, the possible division leading team, either the, uh, the Padres or the Dodgers and all four, all, what is that? Five of these teams could potentially make it to the world series and, even win the world series. You know, we, we would never say that before in the past, but we saw what Arizona did last year. You know, it's highly unlikely, you know, but, but uh, it was a Vince Scully that said in, in the year of the improbable, the impossible has happened, you know, yeah. and that's what postseason baseball is all about because impossible things happen. The Rangers won the world series last year and are one of the worst teams in the league now. Yeah, injuries and such to have played them down a little bit, but still neither here nor there. Um, I'll tell you that it's going to be, I, I think the Diamondbacks will get that, you know, secure that final spot and it's going to be Braves Mets. And truthfully, I don't know how one cannot be romantic about baseball, uh, knowing that we're going to get a double header on the final game of the season Mets Braves. So we got Mets, Mets Mets Braves on the 30th at 110 and then a makeup for today's game that's been postponed. Dude, they uh, knew that this so, hurricane was coming. You know, why wouldn't they plan ahead? Both of these teams had the day off on Monday. They could have started the series a little bit earlier and and got a game in and then possibly had, you know, a, a noon game yesterday instead of getting postponed and it would have been fine. Instead, they're extending the season, making a doubleheader on Monday, and then the wild card game start on Tuesday. No rest for the wicked, man. Good. <laughs> okay. good. Not good for them. I know what you're saying, but you, it, I don't know that that's ever happened where they'll move a game up, ever. Could be wrong, um, but it's easier to move it back than it is to move it up because then you're messing with guys who – you know, are recovering still or whatever else. I mean, a day off, a scheduled day off, and then to cancel that would just be. So what happens crazy. if the rain is even worse on Monday? And then what? Then you have to push back the wild card game? I think they'll push back everything. Yeah, exactly. That's what you would have to do. I or, mean, next... or you just take it to a neutral site. Take it to Texas. Indoor. Somewhere with a mm -hmm. dome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It happened in 2020, right? World Series in Texas. Texas wasn't even involved yet. So, thinking of all those who will be affected by this hurricane. So, everyone stay safe. You know, everyone, uh, you know, I, I was reading just some of the evacuation and everything. It looks like it's going to smack Atlanta. So, let's just 
let's just be safe, hope for the best here, and hopefully we can get some playoff baseball without any interruptions. But yeah, safety first. Yeah, and the the destruction that we saw in Houston, you know, what was it, Katrina? Is that is that what it was called in two thousand seventeen? Uh, Katrina was New Orleans. What was Hurricane? I don't remember. I don't. I don't remember. But it, it's like it's weird, man, because there are natural disasters that happen in certain cities, and then that team ends up winning the championship that season. I've seen it multiple times before, you know. And uh, I don't know. Maybe this is a sign of things to come for for Atlanta. Not this season, you know, but coming back strong next season, I could easily see them being contenders next season. Sure. No doubt. World I mean, Series no contenders. Doubt about that. No doubt about that. Although they're going to lose Max Freed, but still. Yeah, he's been very um, mid anyway. Yeah. And the yeah. shoulder issue. That's why I don't trust Max Freed. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I think – I don't even think the Braves are going to get in. I think the Mets are just hot. Um I think the Mets are going to take both games of that doubleheader. It, 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 it just doesn't feel like the Braves year. Um, I make some pretty stupid predictions here and there, but I had one that unfor- well, unfortunately hit. I said Spencer, Philly's going to win the division this year because Spencer, uh, Spencer Strider is going to get hurt. I just Did you say there's that? There's been too many injuries. There's been, yeah, there's been just too much bad mojo going on with the Braves. It's just not their year. But I do think the Mets will get in. Um, it'll be it'll be fun to watch. I mean, that would be if we're talking about a Mets Brewers series, just, or Mets Padres, or Mets Brewers, or some kind of combination, whatever that looks like. I mean, this is the time of year where anything can happen. You said it. Um, but and that's another thing, man, is we haven't even mentioned the Brewers yet. And the Brewers are kind of an afterthought. Like, you don't even think about the Brewers being able to make it. They traded away Corbin Burns. They traded away their ace. And everyone kind of just assumed that they were going to be like rebuilding, you know, but now they win the division like that. That's insane to me, man. You know, to, for for the Brewers to win the division after they were kind of doing like a little sale, you know, last season at, in, the, in the off season and. Oh, man, they're winning the division. That that's crazy to me, man. Um, I I don't think they have what it takes to get even past the division series. But I said the same thing about the D backs last year. Yeah, and the Brewers. I kind of feel the same about the Brewers as I do with the Guardians. I think they're a good team, but I don't think they're a great team. And I I, I don't think either is going to get be able to get hot at the right time when it matters. I mean, the Brewers. The Brewers have, and I will say, I think the Brewers have the second best postseason atmosphere of any team that's going to be in the postseason behind, well, obviously. So anything can happen when that happens, but the Brewers just don't have a good postseason track record of, they. I mean, they're ALDS and out. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you that that's going to happen depending on who they're playing but i almost like the wild card teams better any of the wild card teams better than i like the brewers yeah and i feel like looking at their pitching freddie peralta is good colin ray is good and then that's basically all they have you know brandon woodruff's out for the season you know with the perforated rotator cuff or you know something like that um tobias myers aaron savali Frankie Montas, who's actually been pretty decent, but, you know, is that the team that's going to take them to the World Series? I don't think so. And the lineup, the, the lineup's actually very mid also, losing Christian Yelich. That was huge, man. Mm-hmm. Yep. So do you want to bring this all the way, or should we save uh, some more predictions here for later on? Um, I, I think we can go all the way to the to the wild card series and the division series. I don't really want to go too many predictions beyond that. But OK, so let's go for the wild card series. So um, looking at the let, let's start with the National League. So Phillies and, and the Brewers are already in. The Brewers are going to have to face one of the wild card teams. So who who do you think the Brewers are going to have to face? Is it going to be the Dodgers or is it going to be the Padres? I mean, you already said the Dodgers are probably going to win the division, right? You you so it looks Dodgers like Milwaukee. So it looks like Milwaukee is going to face 
the Padres, right? Because the number one wild card seed faces the number three uh, seed in, in division winners. So the most, the most recent postseason picture from this morning has the Brewers as the three seed and Diamondbacks as the six seed facing each other. That can oh, switch, so it's obviously. the six seed. Mm -hmm. So right now it would be Brewers versus Diamondbacks. Phillies get the bye, and then Phillies would face the winner of the Diamondbacks Brewers series. And it would be the Mets versus the Padres. Winner faces the Dodgers. Um, Mets versus uh, I gotcha. All right, so all right, so let's say Mets versus Padres. Who you got taking that that series? <clears throat> I, both teams are very hot. Um, both that's going to be, I think, the most intriguing matchup of all of these uh, of all four matchups to start the uh, to kick us off here, but I'm going to take the Padres. Um, I'm going to take the Padres just because of their bullpen. Actually, I just don't trust the Mets bullpen to hold up again. Um, you know, Edwin Diaz just has not had a very Edwin Diaz -y, um season. I know he just had a big six out save, but you know, they're, they're kind of, you know, he's been, he's had a lot of those five, six out saves, four or five, uh, out saves recently. So they might be wearing him down. He just hasn't had the best season, but I don't trust the Mets lineup enough either. You know, Francisco Lindor has been injured. Pete Alonso hasn't had the greatest season. I mean, the Mets are hot. Don't get me wrong, but the Padres are hotter. The Padres have a better pitching rotation. The Padres have a better bullpen. The Padres will be at home for two of those three games. So I'm going to take the Padres. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think the Padres are Definitely the best team of the the three wild card teams, um, but you know, seeing the the Padres possibly going against the Dodgers in the division series, I, it, is it too early to talk about the division series? Maybe we should yeah. wait till next week to uh, to to wait until we see like which wild card teams are actually going to win, so that way we can talk about the the division series next Thursday. Yeah. Let's just put a stamp on all our wild cards here. So we'll, uh, I'm taking the Padres. You going Padres or Mets? I'm going Padres, man. Cool. All uh, right. If and, it, um, Arizona and Milwaukee, who you yeah. got winning that game. And that there's no saying, and there's no saying that this can't flip flop that, you know, ultimately the Brewers might pay, play the Mets. Um, but if this is, if the season ends today, this is our postseason picture. So Diamondbacks Brewers, I'm actually going to go with the Diamondbacks here. I'm going to go with the Diamondbacks just because they, they've they been playing pissed off lately. You know, if you watch some of their baseball, they're, they're, they're almost on like a vengeance tour right now for no reason. And that's just because Corbin Carroll has gotten scorching hot. Um, they're pitching, you know, they're, their pitching hasn't been there this season coming in. I mean, they signed Jordan Montgomery and Eduardo Rodriguez. Neither's done squat, but I think both can get hot at the right time. And if one of them's in the bullpen too, Anything can happen. Um, so I'm going to take the Diamondbacks here, just especially coming off the run that they had last year. They've been there. They know how to do it, you know, and they know how to get hot when it matters. And they have a manager who's not afraid to make bold decisions when it matters, too. Um, I saw that against the Phillies. And, you know, the, the Diamondbacks are a good team that have not played to their full potential this year. But it doesn't matter. You have to play your best when it does. I'm going to actually go on the other side. I think that the Brewers are actually going to take that game because the the pitching rotation that the Diamondbacks had last year is so much better than what they have this year. Zach Gallen has just been underperforming all season. Brandon Fott has been good as of late, you know, but that's all they have. I know you were really big on Eduardo Rodriguez in fantasy this season, but he hasn't really been panning out. And then Merrill Kelly finally coming back from injury you know, and, and he's been kind of all over the place also. So I really don't trust the Diamondbacks pitching to go out there and shut down the, the offense of the Brewers. And the, the Brewers are going to have the home field advantage, you know, and the, I think that's huge in itself because it's a lot easier to to have an, a great offensive game in Milwaukee than it is in Arizona. And they're used mm -hmm. to playing there. They play, you know, 80, 81 games there every single season. So I, I give the advantage to the Brewers. I'm glad we disagree on that one, though. Yep. I hope it stays, and uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see soon, man. We'll see soon. Hot, 
hopping over to the AL picture, um, let's put a final stamp on Detroit and Houston. Who you got? Um, I, I'm, I'm going Houston, but it wouldn't surprise me if Detroit takes it. Yep, same exact boat. Same exact boat. And I, not even to say that it wouldn't surprise me if they took it. It wouldn't be surprising if Detroit swept them. I'm not going to pick it. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, pitching, pitching matters more than anything in the postseason. Clutch inning doesn't hurt either, but you get a pitcher, you can ride that horse. And I think Tarek Skubal can be that horse throughout the postseason and just put the team on his back. So we'll see. I wouldn't be shocked to see Tarek. Obviously, he's going to start the first game. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him back in there and like a long relief or pitch an inning or two in that series, just to advance the next round. But I think Houston's offense is just going to be, you know, if they can get Scooble, get to Scooble earlier and then, you know, I think Houston's offense is just going to be too much. I don't think Detroit's going to be able to score enough runs. And I think all of the games will be relatively low scoring, but I do see Houston taking it. So Houston is probably going to have Fromber Valdez as their number one starter. Right. He, he's basically their ace right now. And then you also have Ronald Blanco that threw a new hit, a no hitter this season and Hunter Brown, who was a top prospect. And he's finally coming into his own this season after a, a couple mediocre seasons uh, in, in 2023 and 2022. So and they also have some depth with Arigetti, you know, but uh, that guy I wouldn't trust to start in a postseason game. Um, I think that that's the type of guy that you put maybe as like, in game four, when you have like a, a lead, you know, in, in the, in the series. Um, but I think that those three guys that I just mentioned, I think that they have what it takes to shut down the competition. But then on the flip side, if you're looking at the Tigers rotation, like you just said, you know, Tarek Skubal and, um, and Jackson Job. I mean, Jackson Job's going to be the, the, the dark horse, right? You don't know what to expect from him because we've only seen him in relief so far in the major leagues. And that happened last night. He actually made his uh, debut last night. So um, who, who, there, there's another picture that they have. Uh, blanking on the name right now. Uh, oh, Cater Montero. Cater Montero. There you go. Mm -hmm. So Cater Montero has been pretty good also, but I don't think that he can hold Houston you know, I, I think that he will, would most likely fall apart. So, like you said, I uh, or like we said, I think Houston is going to take it. But, you know, Detroit still has the momentum in their favor. They're eight and two in the last 10, uh, while Houston is five and five in the last 10. And um, I don't know. De Detroit has a four game winning streak, you know, and, and one of the lowest scoring teams this season. So. Obviously, the pitching's there. The bullpen's there. Starting pitching's there. Oh, man. Imagine what they would be if Javi Baez was actually producing the way that he used to with the Cubs. You know, that that, that would be a fun team to watch. I mean, it's still going to be a fun fun team to watch in the postseason because of how they've been playing lately. But um, Parker Meadows, dude, that, that dude's been out of control. They have a really good lineup. You know, and a lot of people don't even know these names because Detroit's been so irrelevant for so long. But, you know, the, the top five in their lineup are actually pretty good, man. Yeah, and I think they're pretty good. I just don't think they're ready. I think they're, you know, if you think of like putting cookies in the oven and you got to bake them for 12 minutes, I think they've only been in for 10 and they're pulling them out right now. So they're trying to see if they're ready and I don't think they're ready yet. Give them a couple more years. Uh, let them, you know, fill in some pieces in free agency. And I think Detroit's going to be a serious problem. If we're talking, you know, two years from now, this series, I'm going to tell you Detroit's going to win. You know, if we're talking about a one-two punch of Scooble and Jackson Job on top of everything else that's going to happen, but they're just not ready. I, I don't know if you've looked at Detroit's lineup pretty recently, but Parker Meadows, Kerry Carpenter, Matt Veerling, former Philly, Riley Green, Wenzel Perez, Colt Keith, Spencer Torkelson, Trey Sweeney, who they uh, they got in a trade from the Dodgers, I believe, uh, for um, Flaherty. Dude, imagine if they had Jack Flaherty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you like Flaherty a lot more than I do, but still. This season. This season, he's been pretty good, you know. And he was a top prospect in um, 
in the Cardinals organization years ago, you know, but we, we finally get to see the potential that Jack Flaherty had, you know, and it's finally come to fruition now. All right. So going, to... going back to these standings, who, who you got? Um, all right. So we have the Astros that are going against, who did we say? Uh, it was well, going to be either Detroit or KC, right. Depending on standings. Yep. Um, so, okay. So, right, so now, who you... right now will be, right now will be Royals, Baltimore, uh, Royals, Royals for the fourth matchup as of today. So Detroit or KC, who do you have as number five and, and six? Right here. It says Kansas city as it stands at the moment is five and Detroit is six. But they're tied, right? They're tied at the moment in the standings. Yep. So, so like win percentage or, you know, whatever. It, it probably like goes to the matchups. record, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there's still four games left. So, do you think KC is going to finish off strong or do you think Detroit's going to fin- finish off stronger? Who, who do you have as the number five and six this after this Sunday? I mean, Kansas City uh, tomorrow has starts a series against the Braves and the Braves have to win, you know, to keep to stay alive. So the Braves are going to give it their all. Um, so. I think Kansas City is going to be a little bit in trouble. I think they'll take the sixth seed. Um, so with that said, going back, if they were the sixth seed, that would actually have them playing the Astros. Um, but all this can change, even can be completely different by tomorrow. Uh, so let's say if it was that case, then it would be Detroit versus Baltimore. Um, but who does Detroit play the final four games here? White Sox, Detroit. man. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was waiting for. I, I was wondering if you knew or not that the not. That Detroit has the a final series and uh, against the White Sox, you know. So that is clear to me that the Royals are going to be the number six and Detroit's going to be the number five. Probably, yeah, probably. <laughs> Which is crazy to me, man. It's like oh, it's Detroit. It's Detroit. You know, at the beginning of the season, no one thought that they were going to be anything this season. You know, everyone thought it was going to be between Baltimore and the Yankees, you know, which it is. And it was going to be KC and Minnesota and possibly even Seattle. But, you know, Seattle's batting average this season is worse than the league that like, you know, that they basically have no chance. But, dude, Detroit as possibly the, you know, one of the, the top wild card <laughs> options this season. Like that, they're eight and two in the last ten with a four game win streak. That is that is insane to me, dude. Now I think we you you started hitting on it, but you know, imagine Detroit was a team that was friend. They almost traded Tarek Skubal, you know. So obviously, we're not having this conversation if they did. But you know, going back to that, we can talk about briefly what some of the teams who are in the postseason could have done. You know, I. We were talking about the Twins not improving, but there's a lot of teams that did not improve and a couple that did. I think the Dodgers of any team improved the most, um, you know, with Flaherty and a couple of pieces. Well, I mean, I'm talking about since the trade deadline. Um, So that's what I'm really focusing on is who improved the most during the trade deadline to put themselves in position to succeed. And I don't really think I'm trying, I'm trying to remember the trade deadline. I think it's the Padres, man. The, the Padres made a lot of moves. They um, not necessarily like right before the deadline, but you know, in uh, since the off season of last year, you know, they, they bolstered their bullpen, you know, that they, they look really good, dude. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Padres actually go at, at least to the championship series. Padres are my biggest fear. And, you know, I know we're going to talk about this more episodes later on, I say Padres are my biggest fear to the Phillies, uh, truthfully. And, you know, we'll see what happens in the AL. You know, Yankees are, I would say, the heavy favorite. But when's the last time a heavy favorite actually made it to the World Series or won it? Yeah, that that's the thing. Or or won it, you know, because the, the, the Dodgers were the favorites to win the World Series like four seasons in a row. And they only made it like once or twice within that time frame to the World Series, you know getting getting swept by the Diamondbacks and and um losing to the Padres like that's that was very bad for morale in the Dodgers organization but got to say it again playoff baseball anything can happen man 
Sure can. Uh, do you see them changing this format anytime soon? Or I know you, it, it's fun because anyone has a chance, but it's, it's such a long season and, you know, you look it's at a grind. Teams, yeah, it is a grind and, you know, a team can be out in three games and they had a great season. And even a yeah. team like the, you know, it's, it's tough because you see a team like the Braves who Braves and Mets for that matter, who are, you know, really deserving, but you know, they're, you're also going to let a team like Detroit squeak in out of nowhere too. So it, it's just a weird, it's been a very weird year of baseball. Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, like I mentioned before, no team has 100 wins this season. And that in itself says something about the 2024 season. There is no powerhouse of the the league this season. You know, the, the, the powerhouse, the powerhouses have been like the Astros, the, the Dodgers, um, I, I guess just those two teams in the past like five years now, like those were like the, the two top teams and, you know, the Astros won it a couple times. The Dodgers won it once in 2020, which that's another episode that we could talk about that, you know, but you know, that just shows you that it's not, it, it, it is rare that the favorites actually do win the world series. I but I, I'm, I'm excited, man. I mean, I'm really excited for next week. I, I can't wait for Tuesday. Um, I Unfortunately, I go to work at 3 o'clock in the morning, so I'm not going to be able to watch the games live, but I, I'm going to have my AirPods in, and I will be listening to the game as I'm driving around on my forklift. So that'll, <laughs> that'll, be, uh, that'll be the extent of my wild card games, um, uh, depending on, you know, my – days off and stuff but we'll see i'm just so happy i don't have to sweat it out that first yeah. round by is nice yes it is and i'm hoping we get that too you know and i don't know we'll They're see good. man either way more baseball is always better baseball so i'm glad we get yeah, to brother. see see and that that's one of the things that i really love about this uh new playoff format is that we get to see more teams show off what they can really do because in this wild card series, it's do or die, you know, and that's when you get these amazing diving catches and home run robs. And, you know, the vision in my head of when Mookie Betts ran up against the wall and and caught the ball in the air, crashed up against the wall. And, you know, he just screams out in excitement and runs in as as the uh, the inning closes, you know, or. I, I'm sure there's so many different things defensively that you can think of in, in the Phillies history where, you know, someone makes this like crazy play. Like you see Castellanos, he, he picks it up in the postseason defensively during the regular season. He conserves his energy and tries not to get hurt. And that's great, you know, but I love to see his energy in the postseason. He's a dark horse too, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with that. Um, I think if we're specifically talking about who's going to be the biggest dark horse for the Phillies, if we had to, uh, Bryson Stott, who's just had a, had a very quiet, and I, you know, last year we saw a little bit of taste of that and what he can do. I think Castellanos, yeah, he can turn it on. Um, he's been a lot better in the second half, so I don't want to say dark horse just because he's actually playing like the Nick Castellanos he should be. Um but, okay, but but there's a big difference of what Castellanos did in Cincinnati than what he's been doing in Philly, you know. And we see the potential. We've we've seen him do it before, where he hit 35 home runs in a single season, you know. And that's the kind of potential that we could see in in the postseason from Castellanos as well. Um, now, before we end this episode, how? we have to talk about it. It's going to be the first time we're going to see Shohei in the playoffs. What are we expecting out of this? Just number one, what are, what 53 homers right now, 56 stolen bases. What are we looking at as a final? He's going to get 60 stolen bases, right? I would assume. Yeah. He's, he's actively, I mean, the, the thing with stolen bases is all it takes is some effort, you know, because if you have the speed, all it takes is some effort. Home runs are different because you, it has to be, Everything has to be perfect. The stars have to align to be able to hit that home run. It has to be, you know, on time, barreled up, you know, and depending on 
what ballpark you're playing in, you know, but the, the good thing about Otani is he can hit it to left and, and hit it out. He can get it to center and hit it out. He can hit it to right and hit it out. So it, it doesn't matter which way he goes, even if he's late or early or whatever, he can hit it out because he's so freaking strong, but still these guys are not really willing to pitch to him like that. So he is getting some solid contact, but the power has kind of, subsided a little bit i mean he got two walks last night you know and it's it's because pitchers are afraid to pitch to him I you know I, yeah de definitely dude it's it's like um barry bonds you know 15 years ago like he had the most intentional walks of any player in history you know because pitchers are afraid to pitch to him and o o shohei otani is exactly the same who gets 50 50 nobody you know, and except Shohei Otani, there's there's other players that can do it too. I, I wouldn't put it past uh, Bobby Witt or Ronald Acuna, a um, couple other guys that I can't think of right now. You know, but th those three guys right there could definitely hit fifty fifty eventually. Yeah, it seems like fifty five fifty five is is right there. So, yeah. I think 55-55 is definitely doable. I, I'm not going to say 60-60. I'll say 55-60. That, yeah. That's definitely possible. But, yeah, I, I think that's it. I think there's not enough time. Um, well, actually, the last three games are in Colorado. So that actually could happen. Well, I got to run. So let's pick this up next week on that note. Great talking ball with you. And we're going to see a lot of things change over the next week here too. So. Yeah. Sounds good, man. All right, everyone, if you enjoyed this show, uh, I'm going to put a couple links at the bottom, the, the end screen. So you can click on our other show that we have on Sunday nights. It is the power hour with Carlos, uh, Carlo baseball and Ernie orange. And then we also have real talk football that just joined our real talk family this season. And you can also scan that QR code in the top right corner that will take you to all of our social media, including Spotify, where you can listen to the audio version of this podcast. And we will see you guys next week. Peace.